Coach Wells, Matt Allen. It seems like you guys are coming off such a great performance last week. Did that really got, give you guys some momentum heading into this, this key stretch, is going, starting with Tulane? Yeah, I think so. I hope so. Um, you know, I, I think that um, we know that, that we have a, a tall task at hand, you know, starting this week. And, and you know, it's really important for us to, to continue to take it one week at a time, continue to grow, get a week better. There's still a lot of things we left out there. I'm um, really happy with, with the overall performance of our team. I think you just, there's a lot of bright spots on all three sides of the ball, um, but still a lot of things we've got to clean up. I mean, our, our punt protection was, was atrocious this last week. They'll come and attack it. I mean, I, I think Coach Fritz is as good as a football coach as, as there is out there. And, um, you know, I think that his record, you know, shows for itself. He's won everywhere he's been. Um, and so, you know, I, I think top to bottom, this will probably be, you know, the best football team that we played up to date, um, just they're big, they're strong, they're athletic, um, not a ton of weaknesses. So we're going to have to really come in and, and play a sound football game on all three sides of the ball. Um, you know, I, I think defensively, just looking at them, you know, nobody's really been able to establish a run game against them. And so, you know, I think it would be important for us to continue to build on, on what we've been able to do in the run game, find ways to, to get these running, ball, these running backs the ball. Um, you know, I think when you have a quarterback like, like Pratt on the other side of the, of the thing, um, you know, he just has so much experience. I mean, he's a guy that I think will play on Sunday someday. Um, and then special teams wise, you know, they got a returner that's just super explosive that, that we're going to have to contain. So a bunch of challenges this week. Um, but that's, that's the reason we want to come to the American Conference is, is, you know, I think that this is a premier conference where, where the competition is, is going to be, you know, spectacular each and every week. And so I'm um, excited for our kids to, to really go out here and, and compete at the highest of levels. Kind of mentioned it a little bit there, but this is the uh, first game where you're playing an AP top 25 ranked opponent. Just what kind of things does, does that like, like, how do you go into that game? What's the mindset? Yeah, I mean, I, I think our kids will just be naturally more motivated. Um, I mean, obviously, um, they're top 25 team for a reason. I mean, they've earned that right. And, and there's somebody that I, that I think over the course of the last two years has just played phenomenal football. And so, um, so yeah, I think, you know, that they've recruited well. Um, you know, I think they, they're really sound on both sides. Um, they, they put their players in good positions to make plays. I think they're tough on both sides of the football. And so, uh, so, yeah, but we know going into it, I mean, obviously that, that any time, you know, you play a good football team that, that you know, we got to minimize our mistakes out there. we got to tighten everything up a little bit and, and make sure we're, we're on top of our P's and Q's and, and, you know, dot our I's and cross our T's and, and play fast and physical and read our keys and, and be able to, um, to match kind of what they're doing out there. And so, um, so yeah, I think our, our team is super excited. Obviously, we need another great week of practice. I thought we started that off today. And, and had a had a physical practice and and uh, this this is a physical ball club like they pride themselves on physicality and so um, so we gotta we gotta do a great job again tomorrow coming back correcting some things and and have another great Wednesday practice and then get more mental you know on on Thursday and Friday uh, to give us a shot to win this game. You know Tulane is a big team up front and they've had 20 sacks this year, average about three a game. What have you all done kind of to create that type of uh, defensive line just overall how they execute those? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's hard to uh, replicate just because, you know, we don't have, you know, defensive ends. They call it the dog position. That's a huge body out there on the on the perimeter. And, um, you know, I, num number 90 and number six, and they do a fantastic job. And so um, it's hard to replicate just because we don't have big bodies that move that way that are as strong as that. Um, but we've moved some bigger guys outside there to try to replicate it as best as we can in practice. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, we're gonna have to be good at, on. We gotta, we gotta make sure we keep them off balance a little bit, not getting, you know, second long and thirteen. I mean, second long and third and longs, um, you know, so they can activate kind of their pass rush mode. And um, you know, we gotta do a good job with with doing doing running the ball. We gotta do a great job with with screens. We got a great job with the pass game, with the move. I mean, with just everything. We do all those things. And so, but I I have to do a good job as a play caller. You know the best I can to try to keep them off balance a little bit because, boy, they're, they're dang good up front on both sides. Against Navy, you all weren't able to kind of get off fast on, on offense, but how important is it to get off fast to a fast start offensively against this Tulane team on the road, sold out crowd uh, against the top 25 team? Yeah, you know, I disagree with you a little bit. I think we moved the ball. We weren't able to finish drives against them, which hurt us, which ultimately ends up not starting fast, like you said. So, 
um, you know, when we're, when we're able to put together drives, um, it's, it's going to be, you know, it's one of those games that field goals, you know, aren't going to cut it. You know, we've got to be able to be great in the red area. Um, and two, you know, we've been pretty explosive lately, so a bunch of our touchdowns have come out, outside of the red zone. So we've got we to gotta continue to get better in the red area, tighten things up. Um, you know, our quarterback's got to do a great job at, at getting us in some, some things down there in the red area. Um, and, and two, you know, our, our wideouts have shown that they have the capability to make some one-on-one -on -one contested plays down the field. And so uh, we got to continue that trend against, you know, a, a group of corners that are just bigger. They're bigger than what we face. You know, I mean, they got, you know, corners that are 6'2", 205 pounds that, that are long and can run. And so, um, you know, I, I think we'll be a little bit smaller than this team, just holistically across the board. And so um, we got, we got to be able to maneuver in space a little bit better. I don't know. I mean, I I would think that, um, you know, I think it starts with their head coach. Like I said earlier, I think, you know, if you just look at um, history and, and, you know, the way history repeats itself, I mean, he's been in a lot of different schools, a lot of, I mean, from junior college, Division II, Division III, FCS, um, FBS, and, and he's been great at all of them. And, you know, he's done it different ways. It's something I respect him as a coach, you know. I mean, he's done it with the triple option. He's done it with pounding the ball. He's done it with throwing it. And so um, I think it just speaks volume kind of, of what he's been able to orchestrate, you know, and especially, you know, I think, you know, they won two or three games that first year and to be able to rebound that way last year and, and to build a roster, you know, um, the way he did as fast as he, as he did, I think was super impressive. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, that definitely, you know, I don't know, is there any other, um, uh, group of five schools that are in the top 25 or are they the only ones? Air Force, Air Force is too, yeah. So two of them. So, so obviously, yeah, I mean, obviously I think that he's, he's setting a standard that uh, everybody's kind of working towards uh, in this conference and reigning champion. I mean, obviously it's, it's what we're all gunning for. Oscar had a really good game this last week. Is he kind of getting back to himself and being healthy and effective? Yeah, I think he's been healthy. You know, it's been interesting with the backs, and it's always interesting rolling three of them is, you know, one week, you know, they might be in at the at the, uh, at the the right time where, you know, I, we have a great play call in and, and offensive line blocks it up a great way, and, and there it goes. And then, you know, I, I don't think it's been – I don't think he's more healthy now than he was two or three weeks ago. I think, um, you know, we, we were able to block some stuff up up front. He took advantage of those. Really good to see him, you know, on, on uh, there in the third quarter. We got the turnover, and then two plays after that, him be able to bust a long one and just show off his speed. I haven't seen him run like that in the open field, and uh, I joked with him just because, you know, he was one of our faster guys on our GPS for the, for the whole entire game. And, um, you know, I, I said it was because he had the wind behind him. But, uh, but yeah, just super proud of him. I mean, he's always, he's always in tune in the game. Um, you know, he's a, he's a super competitive guy. Uh, I like his game day energy. I, I like his focus, how much he's locked in, even when things haven't been great. And, and, and I say not great, I mean, but when he hasn't been able to put together the numbers he did last week. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with all three of those backs. Another guy that's kind of come on in the last couple of weeks, it seems like it's Jordan Brown, for like the tackle the last two. Is he, has he started to kind of maybe settle into what you guys are doing defensively? Yeah, I think just a part of the, the growth in this system and, and really kind of figure out you know, where he needs to be. Now, the one thing, the last couple of weeks, I think he's played more physical. He's used his hands. He's shedding blocks um, and, and been able to, to, to defeat, defeat some blocks at the point of attack and go make some plays for us. And so, um, so yeah, I think, you know, he'll continue to, to get better within what we're asking him to do within the scheme as he gets more comfortable. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, he, he's a guy that um, – that he's big, he's long, he's physical, and, and we need him, you know, in the middle of this defense to continue to be disruptive. Kind of quietly, the past defense is sort of ra ra rising through the ranks in the, uh, in the AAC. Just what have you seen out of your secondary and just how have they kind of improved as the years gone on? Yeah, I think it's just been a gradual improvement. I think they're buying in to, to what we're coaching. I think their, uh, their you know, alignment's been better. Um, you know, the reading their keys has been better. Our, our communication, when people are giving us motions, it gave us fits early in the year. And, and you can see, 
you know, we're, we're communicating at a higher level. And so um, it's been fun, you know, watch them pull the trigger. I mean, you see some of those guys, you know, uh, Bryce Linder coming downhill and, and making some plays and, and pulling the trigger fast when he gets his key read. Um, it's been good. I mean, I think Evan Jackson's a guy that, you know, showed up a little bit more on special teams this game than he did on, on the defensive side of the ball. Um, but a guy that will continue to grow back there. Logan Wilson's doing a phenomenal job at, at really, you know, stepping up to what we're asking him to do. It's a little bit different than what he's done in the past. He's, he's throwing his body around in there. Um, Patrick Smith has, has been probably our best tackler when he gets there. Um, you know, we still have to eliminate some of his mental bust, but, um, but just to see the growth of them all has, has been good. And, and I think Coach Jennings has done a good job at kind of working hard, working these tackling drills, you know, twice a week, and, and they're really showing to pay off during the course of a game. Your defense seems to be playing <clears throat> better than the last few weeks. I mean, you talk about the secondary, but are you just seeing growth across the board from those guys? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think just a combination of, of everybody doing their job. I mean, I think defense looks extremely pretty when everybody's doing their job. But then, you know, the one time you have one guy in the wrong spot, you know, defense looks looks atrocious. And, and I think that's the difference between offense and defense at times is, you know, you can get away with a receiver busting a route here from time to time and it doesn't show up and, and you know, gash somebody. But, um, you know, I think playing assignment – Football, um, you know, understanding, you know, what we're trying to give accomplished um, has, has been good for that side of the ball. So just um, a, proud of the way they're working right now. And, and I think, you know, we, we got to even take it up another notch uh, starting this week just because I, I think, you know, this quarterback is somebody that's seen a ton of different defenses. You know, I, I think he's, he's an older, mature guy that, that understands this system at a high level. And so, uh, so like I said, just to open it, like I, this will probably be our, our toughest test to date. I wanted to ask you about your team's discipline. Coming into this game, you're top six in the least penalized teams in the country. So kind of what goes into that discipline, kind of staying low on penalties? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, there's a bunch of things that go into it. Um, you know, last week, you know, I, I, I wish we had a couple of those back to, um, but, um, but yeah, I think, you know, we, these are the coaches, really being able to to make it a, an emphasis during the course of the week of technique and and us having our hands in the right places up front on the offensive line on the perimeter blocking not getting holding calls um you know for for us to really be able to be in the right spots on defense and and not get you know uh pis and so you know and then our pre-snap stuff has just been phenomenal all year i mean we just haven't had many pre-snap penalties at all and so um you know I, that's a trend that needs, and we talk about it. You know, we have a have a uh, on our on our good ball, bad ball on Mondays. We talk about penalties and and what happened, what occurred, how we need to correct them. And so, hopefully, they continue to buy into that and um, and not make us go backwards. Obviously, this is you and your staff's first season. Was it just kind of something you emphasized from day one, kind of staying away from penalties? Yeah, I think anytime and and easier said than done. And so I just a testament to all of our coaches and just being able to to really hone in on the details and to be able to get these guys in the right spot at the right time and and use the right techniques that we're wanting to that that aren't looking. And I too, I think you know just and I'm not really accustomed to this league yet. We were two games in, um, just holistically and even watching crossover tape now. I just there's not a fly, a lot of flags that are being thrown right now. Um, you know, throughout the whole entire American. So I, I don't know, like, I don't have an answer for you on why that is, but just something I've kind of picked up on. Coach, stay on defense. Uh, can I get your thoughts on uh, Andy Pritchard this year so far? I think he dashed down a little bit in the last year of the second half. Um, do you see a little bit of a working theory of what you guys might have been able to pull back and forth showing up in that box score? Yeah, I think this defense is, is structured a little bit different, and he's not on the edge as much. And so, um, you know, it's a, this schematics of it you know we're asking him to do something a little bit different than what he's done in the past now um, the great thing about Mason is is never complain complain any of those things like he's he's been a part of of doing whatever we need to do as a team to win football games and so um, you know I, I think you'll continue to see you know him kind of figure out the things to get good because he's had some some incredible pass rushes here the last couple of weeks and so I think um, as he grows kind of in this new position and, and playing a little bit different technique than he has in the past, that he'll continue to uh, to rise and, and get some major stops for us.
We talked a little bit about Ron last week, and I wanted to follow up with you. Do you see any similarities between yourself as a player and maybe the way Rod is playing for you guys? Yeah, it plays a different position. I, I play the H position. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we were both punt returners and, and probably not burners, um, you know, and, and so, uh, so, yeah, a little similarity, just steady Eddie, consistent. Um, you know, I think quarterbacks trust him when they throw it his way. He's going to be in the right spot at the right time, and he's got great ball skills. Um, and so, uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely some, some similarities there. I also wanted to ask you a little about uh, Noah, who's been, you know, such a steady guy for you on field goals and also been a weapon on kickoffs. How important has he been to your guys' success this year? Yeah, just, I mean, huge. And it's something, you know, um, as a coach, those are things you forget about. I forget about, you know, it's it's a luxury almost to have a kicker like that just because you don't worry about, you know, the, the returns. I mean, I can't, I mean, there's been very few uh, kickoffs returned on us this year. And so, um, so I think, you know, it's just a, it's something that you don't realize it until you don't have it, and then you're having to defend a lot of kickoffs. And so, uh, you know, we've been able to score, you know, quite a bit this year. And so, um, you know, to be able to just put it in the back every time is, is something that's awesome. Obviously, the win challenged us a little bit last week, but just a phenomenal I mean, end of that headwind. I mean, I think they actually returned one of them. Um, but the return, I mean, the coverage unit did an incredible job. We challenged them all week. We knew the wind was going to be strong. And so to see those guys finally get down there and, and make a play, um, as Evan Jackson ended up coming up with it with, with some excitement, with something good. But yeah, Noah's been fantastic on and off the field. Just He's a great teammate, a, a great leader in the specialist room, and, and somebody that I wish we had longer than a year. Yeah, because he's just got a cannon for a leg. You, you've mentioned it before here and there, but he, he really does have the strongest leg you've had over the course of your career. Yeah, and I don't even think it's close. You know, I think he continues and, and you know, can continue to show the consistency kicking you know extra points and field goals I think he's definitely going to have a chance to play at the next level just because you know the strength of his leg um, and just the way he prepares I mean he's a professional every day he comes to work and and I think is is truly just a, a pleasure to be around yeah because the question seemed like him coming in we he kind of knew he was a great kickoff guy from his time at Baylor has he just really developed as a, as a field goal kicker with his accuracy and what he's been able to do there? Yeah, I can't answer that, to be honest with you, just because I didn't really know and he didn't kick him at Baylor. So I don't, I don't know kind of where I have nothing to judge it upon. But, yeah, since he's been here, I mean, just and, – and we kick and chart, you know, a ton of kicks inside, outside, you know, against the wind, with the wind, all the thing. And, and he's just been phenomenal as far as accuracy for us. And so um, – so yeah, I mean that'd be a great question for Noah and just see if he thinks that he's improved that much. Um, but um, if, if I gave you an answer, I'd be lying. All right, Oscar, where you guys head into heading this game off such a good performance last week? How much momentum does that give you guys going into the two lane games the way you played last week? It's always good to come off a good energy from the last game. So going into the next game, high energy, high hopes. The last uh, three or four weeks, the rushing offense has really come around. Just why do you think that is, and you know what have y'all done to kind of improve steadily through the years? Coach Morris hit it on the hit it right, and when he said it, that more guys are buying in into everything, offensively, defensively, and special teams. When you hit all three of those in one game, you kind of see what happens from the scoreboard. You were around when you guys beat UTSA, You're playing a ranked team again this this week. What did you guys do so well? Previously, that maybe you guys who are around can carry over to this next game. You just buy in and just be so happy and blessed that you're getting a chance to go against a ranked team. You know, going into a game like that, it's only 25 teams in the nation that's ranked. So, going into a game like that, you're just happy and just so ecstatic that we get to get a chance to go out here and play these guys. This weekend is Tulane's homecoming game. They're expecting a huge sellout crowd. Just how do you respond? For real? To that? That's dope. Yeah. How do you respond to having big crowds there, especially when it's you just seen it, bro? Smile on my face. Let's do it. Like that's it's exciting. Everybody loves to see a sellout crowd, man. If you don't like to play in front of that, you shouldn't like to play football. So that's a big team up front. What have you all kind of seen in film and prepared to do for this game against that type of defensive line? That's how they play on defense. Man, just watching them, uh, watching them as much as we can. You know, I seen Grubbs. I don't know if Vito remembers this, but Grubbs used to play for LA Tech. Remember his freshman year? So like, we watching him again, like watching his progression over the years, is pretty dope, and seeing like how good they are up front. Well, those guys on defense kind of go watch Darius Hodges. He's one of the best pass rushers in the in the conference. Six, right? 
Huh? Number six? Yeah. yeah. So, what have you seen out of him in film and just what kind of things does he present? Big guy, great, great outside, uh, pressure. Uh, can't wait to see him. We can't wait to get out there and like go against him. Could this be a season defining stretch for you guys? You have, you know, you have a ranked team this week and then the top four teams in the poll you play in the next four weeks. Is this going to be just critical for you guys to play well in this next series of four games? Man, we're just trying to take it week by week, game by game. That's what we're trying to do. Coming into the top at offense in the American Athletic Conference, just what has worked so well for y'all and what has the balance been like really? Coach Morris hits it on the point every single time we come into meetings on Sunday. He says that everybody buys in, and once you all buy in, it's very easy to perform. Best game of the season for you this last week. Did you just finally get the right opportunities, or what, what went into your big performance? Man, I went out there, and I just kind of got some good looks, and I was just happy that I got them. And when I got them, I took advantage of them. Temple was a great team, great run defense, but when I got the chances to take advantage of them, I did. Because you came back, you know, last couple of years you've been, you know, injured a couple of times. Has this just been special for you this year to be back and healthy and playing well? I don't know what injuries you're talking about, but it is. It has, it's been a blessing, man. You know, every chance I get a chance to put up, my, put on my helmet for the North Texas Mean Green, it's always a blessing and always happy to be out there with, for this team, for this city, man. Didn't deserve so much. Discipline. So what, what kind of things do y'all do to kind of work on discipline and do that? You know, Coach Kagan's and the strength, strength staff and Coach Morris and even our uh, student at, athlete uh, people, they even be on top of us being disciplined with everything we do when it comes down from being a, a student in class and being an athlete on the football field, you know, having a routine, doing the same thing, not getting out of that routine and being disciplined, disciplined, disciplined. Carries over. I was going to ask you about Noah. You know, he was the guy that came in in the off season this year. He's been so reliable for you guys. As an offensive player, is it just a comfort to know that you have that guy in your back pocket that can bang through a fifty-five yard for you if you need it? For sure, for sure. Noah's a great guy too. And then just kind of going to Tulane. Tulane's kind of been one of the G five powerhouses the last year. Obviously, they beat USC last season. That was a big win. Mm -hmm. Are they kind of trailblazers? For the G5 going for, for, for sure, they're they're runners for for the G5. You know, we we're glad that we got somebody in the G5 that can produce and do all of that for us. You know, having making a name for G5 teams. Oscar, uh, throughout the season, how have you kind of seen the season, uh, defense kind of evolve, playing practice against that particularly in that stretch, stretches? For sure, um, guys are buying in on the defense, and once you get that, you can't really see anything bad going on. Like, if you buy in, you will produce. And that's what the defense has done. Shut out in the second half last week. Dope. You've seen Coach Capone do the stone cold. Like, you want to see that every game, you know. And so after we've seen that, I'm pretty sure everybody on the defense is going to want to see that again. All right, Carson, you guys played so well last week. How much momentum does that give you guys going into this stretch? You know, it gives us a lot of uh, a lot of confidence going forward. I feel like we uh, we played together as a unit really well on both sides of the ball. Really, all three sides of the ball. Um, everyone executed their uh, their jobs, and uh, we were uh, we were locked into the um, the film study. It paid off big time. So we're hoping to build off that going forward and uh, going against a uh, a good Tulane team. So hopefully, we can go down into uh, New Orleans and and make it happen. Into the game that you picked up your uh, first North Texas interception. Just what was that like? Oh, it was awesome. You know, uh, just uh, had, I'd, I'd studied all that in film, um, knew the formation, and knew that route was coming. I knew he really liked to go to that uh, that receiver, so uh, rolled over there and yeah, was able to make it happen. So it's really cool. Um, just uh, hopefully we can build off that and continue the success. Did you start figuring out here a little bit defensively the last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, I think we already we always had it kind of figured out, but we just got to kind of put the pieces together, you know. Um, everything's kind of meshing together really well right now, and everyone's playing for each other and, and complimenting each other right now. So um, we can, like I said, just build off of it this next week and just keep the ball rolling. Um, everyone's being real physical and, and uh, playing hard in practice right now, and we're uh, really uh, assignment sound. So I think it's going to pay off this Saturday. Looking at the defense as a, uh, in a holistic sense, uh, picked up three interceptions as a unit. Just mm -hmm. how 
big are turnovers going forward, especially in this hard conference slate? Oh, it's huge. And, and like I said, you know, it all goes into film study. Uh, I think we're, we're really locked into uh, that side of, of preparation. And uh, it does pay off on Saturdays. And, you know, turnovers they, they lead to scores and leads to wins. So, you know, if you can keep the ball in our hands, obviously you're going to win more games. And so, yeah, it's huge. We're looking forward, looking forward to uh, this Saturday. Hopefully we can have that, make, have that happen again. So. <clears throat> on Saturday, you guys are facing a ranked team, which you guys haven't done in a while. It's supposed to be a sellout. Are you guys just excited for the opportunity this game presents? Yeah. Um, uh, last time we faced a ranked opponent, we, uh, we knocked them off. So. Um, looking, looking forward to doing that again. I think uh, you know, the guys are looking forward to, uh, like I said, getting down there and making it happen. Yeah, I mean, you were on that, that team. What, is there something you guys that were here can take from that game that can maybe help you prepare in this one? You know, um, football's football when it comes down to it. We just got to execute at a high level. Uh, I don't care who you're playing. Um, I think you got to treat everyone as if they are the best team you're ever going to play. So uh, I think that's what we're going to come out and do on Saturday and what we try to do every Saturday. So. Yeah. And then just kind of looking at Tulane, they had a big win last year at the Combo. Did you watch that game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. And then watching that game, did you just kind of feel like, wow, we're going into the American Athletic Conference to play that team? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like I said, you, you got to prepare to play uh, play at a high level every week. But um, I think uh, I think they you got to give them credit where credit's due. They're a good team, and we got to come and bring our uh, bring our A game. So uh, looking forward to the uh, to the challenge. You know, on this Saturday, um, I'm. We're not worried about it at all, though. I think that we're going to come out and, and execute how we need to, and I think we're going to do pretty well. You got that quarterback, Michael Pratt. How many guys is going to be playing on Sunday? So, just what have you seen out of Henry Bell? And what makes him so difficult? Oh, you know, I mean, I think he's a, I mean, he's a, he's a good, talented quarterback. Um, we just got to get pressure on him and knock him out of his game. Um, I think we're going to do pretty well on the back end, covering up the routes and giving him a hard time trying to hit his target. But uh, we're going to get some pressure in his face and, and make it kind of tough on him. And into this game, Carson, y'all are uh, one of the best uh, disciplined teams in the country, very well uh, penalties each game. Just kind of what goes into that, and you know, how does practice kind of translate into games in terms of discipline? And uh, just just being disciplined and knowing knowing what your responsibilities are kind of plays into a bunch of the the uh, the penalties. You know, I mean, if you, know, you got a got a DB trying to cover a route and he knows exactly where he needs to be, is going to be way less of a chance for you to get a, a PI, you know, so just stuff like that. And, you know, I don't think that there's any anything that really goes into it other than just being disciplined, you know, and we practice that every single day at practice. So um, translates to the game. Just overall, what do you see in Tulane that has made them such an effective? Um, I just think I think that they uh, they have it all figured out right now. And, and I think that they're they're a good, talented team. But uh, I mean, you know, I think we, we uh, we're just as good. So come out and, and uh, make it happen on Saturday. When you face the, uh, the teams that were picked in the top four spots in the preseason poll in your next four games, is this going to be a season-defining stretch beginning this weekend for you guys? Uh, you know, I, we just take it week by week. Um, I just want to, we just want to come out and and win every, win every game. You know, go one and zero every week. So uh, we aren't really looking forward too much. We're just looking at this next game. You know, so that's what that's what we try to keep our uh, focus on. And we love it, honestly. I think, especially the defense, like defensively, that's huge. I mean, you bring in all kinds of energy, negative or positive. I love it. You know, we, uh, you know, they start booing you and stuff. Like, sure, bring it on, let's go. You know, it's almost kind of like feeds the fire. So, uh, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a killer environment, and man, yeah, it's going to be awesome. We're going to story at Noah <clears throat> Rauschenberg. You know, he's coming in, been such a weapon for you guys. Mm -hmm. Has he really helped you guys as a, as a team, just what he's done as far as kickoffs and then being that so dependable with field goals and extra points? Oh, most definitely. Yeah, you know, he's he's a heck of a guy and even better kicker. So, I mean, I uh, definitely definitely happy to have him on, on our side for sure. So, yeah, definitely. You gotten to know him since he got here? Oh, yeah, I've known him for a long time. You know, we played against each other in high school. Um, in the state championship game, we played against each other. He went to Union, I went to Owasso, and uh, we were rival schools. So. Um, but yeah, and that kind of played a lot into getting him here because you know after he you know jumped the transfer portal from Baylor, uh, Coach Sabota put me on the official visit, and so I was like, yeah, you got to come here and play with me. So, so what's he what's he like as a guy? Just haven't known him over the years. Noah, he's a great guy. Yeah, he's a uh, he's he's super into you know the outdoors and stuff. He's kind of a chill. He's a chiller. If that makes sense. So he just he just kind of hangs out, man. He's uh, but he's super go with the flow. 
and he's about his business too. So whenever it comes to kicking, he's dialed in. So good guy. Oh, I mean, he brings great leadership for us. I mean, I think that, you know, obviously his, his rush off the edge is huge, and um, his presence on the D-line helps us out a lot as linebackers. So, um, yeah, key part for our, for our defense and, and uh, for the leadership roles on the team, too. So, I mean, yeah, he's, he's just one of, our, uh, one, of our, one of our leaders on the team, and obviously because he's a captain. So, I mean, you know, everyone looks up to him. So.